Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Well, Inter Interactive Conversations with Creatives. Uh, the Well is uh, produced by Born and Jew Creative out of East Los Angeles, California. This is your first time uh, tuning in. Born and June Creative is a design, uh, design studio that, create, uh, that works in branding, content creation, uh, design, and marketing. Today, we're speaking with an artist, Eduardo Gomez. He's someone that I got a pleasure to meet. And it's been about three or four years, and I actually met Eduardo at yeah. a mutual friend acquaintance uh, art show yeah. in Boyle Heights, and we just so started talking about art, about music. On top of being a a, a prolific artist, Eduardo is also a, a prolific DJ who's um, played internationally. Uh, has a party that that was going on for about how was it yeah, right. years straight until COVID? Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Eduardo is just someone I've, I've always looked up to, not only because of the quality work that he creates, but how he's, he's creating artwork while still having a job that isn't, you know, his artwork isn't his full-time job, but even on top of having a nine-to-five that is something that takes up about 40, 50 hours a week from him, he's still able to find space to create quality work. And I know that the insights that I've gotten from Eduardo, the conversations I've been able to have him with him about art, and the things that I've learned have been very insightful. And I wanted to give, you know, the listeners an opportunity, you know, in this conversation to learn, you know, get inspired. Like I said, this is someone who's doing this outside of his nine to five and still like creating this work that's super impactful. He just recently completed a project where it added up to 120 pieces over a four month span. We'll talk a little, a little bit about that later, but now I want to hand over to Eduardo to just, you know, Tell us a little bit about your history, how you got into art, and, you know, where it's led, you know, to now. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Like, um, you know, it's always nice to have a conversation about cre creating or creativity and just kind of keeping that constant dialogue is very important. So um, I'm, I'm originally from Long Beach. I grew up there, Long Beach. Uh, uh, I'm living in Los Angeles now, but I, um, I originally grew up in, in Long Beach. I went to school out there. Um, got my BFA at Long Beach State, um, 2007. Then I went to grad school. I went to San Francisco. Uh, did my master's uh, of art up there at California College of the Arts. Shout out CCA. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I came back. I came back to LA. I came back in. I graduated from grad school in 2010, and I stayed a year. I had a couple shows there um, after I graduated, and then I moved down here in 2011, uh, back home to Southern California. Well, Southern California, uh, L.A. in particular. I mean, I grew up in Long Beach, which is part of L.A. County. So when I came back, I knew I, I wanted to be in the city just because there's a lot more going on here, more opportunities, um, you know, um, so many different opportunities here in the city. Uh, and I knew I wanted to come to L.A. And now, now I live in L.A. I still go to Long Beach often to visit my parents and family, but um, I'm in Los Angeles now. So, yeah, um, you know, just, you know, trying to do my thing out here in L.A., um, you know, I also DJ, which, you know, um, that's kind of, I don't know if I met you before, when I met you, did I meet you before? Uh, I, I thought I met you like at Dinamita or something the first time, but I could be wrong. I th it could have so, been at that show. So like in that, in that, like, I don't want, I don't know if it's like a community, but like that circle of people that, um. Mm -hmm. Like around like the Lopez family, like Fernando, you know, like Fernando with I, oh yeah, with I love yeah. you brothers, and from mm -hmm. there like, um, you know, that's how Ernesto, they, like he knows Ernesto, right, 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 uh, you know, like and then you know Fernando knows knows, knows you guys. That's actually how mm -hmm. I met Sumo too, but just from all the shows and like the the first, I think it was like I didn't meet you there, but I, I remember like having a conversation where like you were like like around, um, was at uh, Taste Taste of Mexico. Oh yeah. Taste of Mexico became um, the uh, they ended that and then they started doing the uh, what's the, the Taco Madness? Yeah, uh, Taco Madness. We, so like we had been around each other, it just we never had an official conversation. Just uh, but when I officially met you was at Ernesto's show. Yeah, I, I yeah. remember that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was just was cool. Was really yeah, it was cool. I think we the were space was dope. Show. I really like that space. Yeah, for sure, man. He still has it. Like, um, I don't know if he's, if he's gonna have any more. Uh, parties there but he really developed it like it's i was so yeah, that was a nice studio yeah, yeah for really sure, nice. man. he's uh he's really like turning into something that's like incredible and i'm super proud of him for that but that's where we first met and we started talking about art 
And I, at the time, didn't know that you created it, you know, that you were an artist and um, I got a little, you know, you gave me a little bit of your background and then I started looking into your work and the kind of work that you were producing. And I was, I, I think I told you, I was like, dude, how are you not like creating work and like, you know, like, a, like, why aren't you doing this full time? And I remember you telling me, you're just like, right now my passion is, is music. And even now, you know, I think about that because I know you DJ a lot and you're the amount of love and attention that you put into art. I feel like you do that with everything. So with the DJing, it's the same thing, you know, like the, you know, the kind of music that you've been able to curate, the travels that you had to go digging, you know what I mean? Like all of that is a labor of love. And for someone that I'm not, I appreciate music and I don't want to say I love music because you love music. Love is an act, right? So uh, you can still love music and not DJ. It's, you know, like it's. I just feel like it's understated compared to like the sacrifices that you've made. You know, that's why I always tell people like, "Hey, man, love your DJs because those those guys are getting stories and like these sounds that if you wouldn't, if they wouldn't have put in this time to be like in a in a basement in like Mexico, sweating their asses <laughs> off to get this record that you never would have heard, like you never would have heard it, like you wouldn't have been dancing right now, you wouldn't have been appreciating it." And, like, all of that is, like, energy, you know, and, like, appreciate that, you know. And I was so impressed that even with the DJ and you were still creating, like, this, these amazing works. One of my favorite pieces that you created was the, um, the Beastie Boys, the License to Ill, um, the, the Airplane Man. Like, it's a when, – when you explained it to me, I was kind of, like, I had one idea about it because, you know, you know how it is when, like, people explain something to you it's, and then you finally see it. Like, it's not exactly how you imagined it. But the way you explained it, and when I finally saw it, I was just super blown away. And it was, it was, you know, it's a sculpture. It's not a painting. It's, and you're also very prolific and also very, you know, gifted and talented in painting. But then you sculpted something that was just something that was so, like, so iconic, you know? And the attention to detail. And I, when I saw that, I was just like, wow, to me, Eduardo, you know, I've, I've spoken to a lot of artists. And, like, not to, like, take, any, take away from anyone else, you're probably one of the first artists that I've met that is – that has created really impactful work that isn't someone that is doing it full time, you know, because I feel like you could be doing it full time, but like, like you said before, like that's not where your passion is right now. So I always really appreciate that even with your pouring into DJing, having a full time job, being in a relationship, which also takes time and work and effort. Uh, shout out to Fabi. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were still creating this work, you know, and I was always impressed by that. And I, I think through a couple conversations that we had about art, like you kind of gave me insight and like tricks and, you know, how are you able to find the space to do that? And at the same time, still, you know, give your, you know, give a lot to these other aspects of your life. That's to me is something that I think you give, if you give us a little insight on that could be very helpful to people who are listening. Yeah. I mean, my most recent work ever, well, that I've been making since I graduated because I haven't had a full-time studio since I was in grad school, really. Um, a lot of the work that I've made has just been here at home. It's, you know, work that I can't get too big with or too crazy with as far as materials go. Um, you know, the BCS plane, that was basically paper mache. So it was just newspaper and glue and some cardboard. So, I mean, that you could do anywhere. It's non-toxic. Uh, there's no fumes. Um, I haven't been painting in oil, which I kind of miss, um, but you definitely need a studio for that. So a lot of those works uh, that you're mentioning have been just here at home in my apartment. Um, you know, a lot of the drawings that I did for the Dodger series were just I drew them on my lap. You know, so they're pretty small works. So nothing, nothing, you know, that that wouldn't endanger me, I guess. Um, but you know, uh, there's still ways to work even if you don't have a space. You know, you could, you could work outside it doesn't matter I mean there's there's different ways so most of those works at home I've been working from home mainly I got I have to give you a lot of props because you know I think even me at a point you know when I was creating work like I made excuses as to like hey I can't do the kind of work that I want to do so I'm not going to do it it took right. me it took me time to kind of get over that just because I mean as artists I, I think we're always listening and having conversations or even now a podcast you hear, like, you know, we have access to the thoughts of these artists that we listen to. And even now with this conversation where, you know, I wish maybe we would have had this before, there's always a reason not to do something, right? There's always a reason maybe not to create what you want to create. But when you have limitations or when you have, you know, you find a way to do it, 
Like that's when you're, you know, you could still create work that connects, work that hits. And I've seen you do that, man. And like, it's, it's super impressive, you know, like, and I have to give you a lot of props for not letting the things that you wanted to do, or maybe have like, you know, create be the reason for you to not create. And I think, you know, I think, like I said, there might be a lot of people, someone who's listening to this, that's kind of letting that happen, but you can, you can do great work with anything. You know, I, I think even too, and um, I'm, I'm actually going to show the audience on IG, the, uh, the Dodger series and go through it and, and talk about some of my favorite pieces. But at a certain point you were actually even doing ballpoint, you know, like it, it went from the watercolor to, you know, you're doing ballpoint pin. And even that work was like super, like, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Like the detail, the, the, everything that's going into that to make it look how it did. Like, I know that takes time. It's not, Hey, it's easier than the watercolors. It's like, no man, it's still complex. There's still thought that goes into it. But for whatever reason, like you, you still created, like you didn't stop. And I, right. No. I really yeah. That, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, just any materials that I could just use here at home. That's, that's, you know, that was, I wasn't going to make any ex- excuses to where, you know, I, I don't have this or the space to do that. Um, it was just a matter of just doing it with the materials that, that, that would work and fit with the space, you know. Awesome, man. That's amazing. So what I did want to touch on was, you know, probably one of the largest pieces of work that I've come across in a really long time that was created not only during a pandemic, but just created over four months, you know, um, the, the, and it was what uh, Eduardo was talking about earlier. He was alluding to the, his Dodger series, and what he just de- what he decided to do was that, um, as everyone knows, that the the MLB season didn't start on time; it was actually postponed. So I don't know where you got the idea. Maybe you can kind of let us, you know, like kind of give us uh, some backstory on that. But you decided that you were going to create a Dodger uh, watercolor painting a day until the season started. First off. I got it. That's crazy because like you had no idea when it, when it was gonna start. <laughs> I you didn't. Know, if, yeah. if you would have stopped at forty, I would have been like, "Oh, dude, respect." If you would have stopped at thirty, I mean, if you would have stopped at ten, just the detail of these paintings, I would still had a lot of respect for that. But you stopped at one nineteen, and the reason why you stopped is is that the MLB's MLB MLB season actually finally started. But if you could just you know give me a little insight, man, like what kind of gave you the thought to do that because. It's super impressive, and I can't wait to show the audience on uh, some of the work. Well, you know, like you mentioned earlier, for a long time, my passion, I got into music after grad school. Like, I was, you know, grad school was very challenging and, and, and tough, um, and I was kind of burnt out at that point from undergrad and grad school. So I started getting into music, collecting music. Um, you know, I started DJing, and a lot of people know me as a DJ out here because that's kind of what I did when I first came out here. But uh, recently, I... I kind of like told myself, you know, it's kind of time to go back to drawing. Let's start, you know, making some more art. And I had done stuff here and there over the years since I came, came back from uh, San Francisco. But, um, you know, it was time to try to do it on a consistent basis. So uh, when the baseball season, you know, when they, when they announced that they were going to postpone it, you know, I kind of told myself, well, I could probably do something with this as far as like a – you know, like maybe a series or something. And, you know, the day that, that opening day was, when it was supposed to start, you know, I, I told myself that day, I was like, you know, instead of watching the game, I'm going to just use that time to make a drawing. Because normally, I, you know, if I'm working or I'll have the game on, and I just told myself, you know, this is a perfect way to kind of challenge myself and to get me back into drawing on a consistent basis. So, you know, I told myself, you know, we're going to do this. It doesn't matter. We're just going to every day, dedicate the time. It doesn't matter if it's a cartoon. It doesn't matter how real it looks. If it doesn't look realistic. A lot of these, I wanted to make them really quick, like in, like in an hour, um, to where, you know, I just wanted to do them fast and very kind of loose. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, hold on. This thing's talking to me. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, there were supposed to just be fast little drawings. And, you know, the more time that went, into the series, the more serious I began to take it, okay. and the more time I kind of devoted to them. So toward the end, I was already um, spending like four or five hours on the last ones. So okay. I started trying to make them fast, but ended up taking, you know, from the fastest one maybe an hour to the longest one maybe like six to seven hours. 
Nice. But yeah, I'm, you just I'm really glad you, know, you said I that too about the time you're taking. That, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a Dodger day, day to opening day. And, you know, that's kind of the hashtag that I use. But the title of the piece is a Dodger day. But, um, you know, I just, um, yeah, I just had to do it. It was, you know, no excuses. Just go and find the time and, and do it and, and, you know, make myself draw every day. I, I want to thank you for talking about how long it took you for some of those at the end, like seven to eight hours. I, um, I'm making it a point just for people who are learning, who are just starting to create now with uh, social media and now, now with tools like with like the iPad and Procreate. I see a lot of people starting to create work, you know, and I think that's awesome. Like, I think yeah. if you have the desire to do it, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Like, you can do it, you know. Um, yeah, it doesn't even matter if it's digital or on pen on paper. It doesn't exactly. matter. As long as you're, like, creating, that's, I mean, that's a good thing. You know, it's, yeah, you and, know that's and, one of the things that we've talked about that I, yeah, sure. I kind of need, need to kind of delve in a little more is the digital drawing game because I'm, I'm not really familiar with it. Oh, and I want to be because know, I know it's a lot faster. With you, it's just learning the tools because you already have the foundation. But the foundation's super important, you know. And um, the reason why I wanted to talk about the time is that Good work takes time. Eduardo's been an artist. You, you know, I mean, you have your MFA. You've been drawing, like, and creating high quality work for a really long time, and it's, it takes a long time. You know, it takes effort to do that. I think, I think, um, with social media now, people see see someone who creates a piece of work, and they think, oh, that person just sat down and did it, and it's like, no, man, like planning. There's a lot of erasing. There's a lot of like maybe even restarting. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into that. And even someone that I consider a master, still taking them seven to eight hours to create high-quality work, that's okay. You know, I think some, a lot of people think that it's with these tools that makes it easier. And it's like, no, man, there's so much skill and knowledge that goes behind it. I'm, I'm someone that's self-taught on, and on, on, the art, on the art side, um, somewhat self-taught on the design side. But um, as I'm delving even more into art theory, I mean, we had a conversation about this, you know, uh, the other uh, not too long ago about color theory, you know, and the depths of that and wh how what you can yep. do with that. And the more that I learn about these things, it makes me appreciate what you do even more so because there's so much knowledge and time that you put into be able to do that, and it comes out in your work, you know. So I want anyone who's listening to this and anyone who's getting getting started, you know, do do the do you know do yourself a favor, do the due diligence. It's gonna make your work. You, you know, you're going to get those tools to create what's in your head. I think a lot of times, you know, people think that if you can't get what's in your head down on paper, that you're not an artist. It's like, no, man, you just don't have the tools yet. Once you have those tools and learn, you can. So I, I really appreciate you, you know, talking about the time and safety because great work takes time. And uh, with, that, with that being said, I actually want to go through your IG page and go through some of the pieces and some of my favorite pieces and just kind of go, go through how impressive it is. So this is, uh, first off, this is Eduardo's IG. If you haven't, you should go follow it right now. And you should thank me for hooking you up because this guy creates awesome work. And um, just, uh, you're going to see this Dodger series and you're going to see what I mean. But, like, even this, this was the last one, right? This was the last of the series? Yeah, that's the last one. Kershaw. Wow. And this is something we haven't even talked about yet. <laughs> and this is incredible. Could you swipe on that on the pictures to see the detail? For sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's um, IG. It's, it's uh, what you call it. it I, it's how you set it up. It's the um, carousel. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The craziest thing about this, everyone, is that Eduardo's right-handed, but he decided to do this with his left hand. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't even tell you, like, when, when, you started, when, when you said that, and I was just like, I got so much work to do, man. Like, this dude's, like, <laughs> flexing so hard on us. Like, left-handed, like. You're yeah, you know, is like, you know, drawing with both your hands and then doing this amount of work with your left hand is just it's insane, man. Insane. Well, I mean, that's the, the one thing is like I've been drawing with my left hand ever since I was in grad school. That's like one of the things that I was experimenting with at the okay. time. Um, I, was do, I was using it initially to try to abstract people naturally because what I was doing is I was interviewing um, um, day laborers that I, I had met. Okay. And, and I was going to uh, – I wanted to – paint or, or draw their portrait, but kind of conceal their identity. So the way that I wanted to do that, I was like, well, I can abstract them by drawing with my opposite hand, right? So I did portraits of them left-handed to abstract their face because it wasn't going to be all rendered like if I did it with my right. 
So that's initially how I started drawing with my left hand. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. I've been doing it ever since because it, I like the line quality. Like, it, I like that heavy-handed line quality mm -hmm. um, that I end up doing with my left hand. And it's a whole completely different thought process of actually executing a drawing with my left hand than it would be with my right. Because, you know, I, I went to school, my right hand, I was trained to paint, draw with my right hand. And, and I know and anytime I draw, I try to, you know, draw in that way. But as a way of me kind of like forgetting that and finding a new way to draw and a more interesting a more interesting way for me, at least, and more fun way. And, you know, I started drawing with my left hand. So for me, the left-handed thing, it was like whatever mark I made with my left hand, that was going to be it. So it was going to be super abstracted. Um, you know, obviously, with more time, I, I got better. You know, I've gotten better. I've been drawing with my left hand for maybe, I'd say, maybe 12 years now. Wow. I went to grad school in 2008. So a lot of the times that I did draw over the years, it was always with my left hand. So, you know, these, you know, I thought it'd keep it fun for me, uh, drawing with my left hand. And then I just started caring too much toward the end. The more I did these drawings, um, you know, I started caring more. So I started putting more time into them. Um, and the, the works are ambidextrous. The drawing part mostly, i say 95% of them are left-handed, the drawing part. But the, the painting part I drew with my right. So that's why they're ambidextrous works because I did use Oh, nice. Hands. So the drawing left-handed, paint right-handed. Because if I was to paint with my left hand, it would take me way too long. I was like, I'm not about to start painting with my left hand. I mean, just the just the motion and the muscle memory of mixing color. Yeah. You know, on a palette, like to learn that with your left hand is like crazy. So I was like, no, I just paint them right-handed. So something, yeah. Something that I've learned too through color is that um, you know uh. The pressure that you're you're putting on like with the color can add you know make it darker. So if you're trying to add volume, you know what I mean, like that, those kind of things come into play. So l learning that from the opposite hand, like yeah, dude, I now yeah. learning and understanding what that is, like I totally understand what that is, and I just wanted to kind of just touch on that a little bit. So if the audience isn't as familiar, um, that's I think uh, kind of that that is what Eduardo's uh, referring to. But just this is incredible work, man. This, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, um, it reminded me of. Um, I recently heard uh, David Cho, the artist, mm -hmm. he was talking about Picasso and how Picasso, if you look at his work, by the time he was like 16, he was doing like this amazing work. And oh, that, yeah. And that over over the years, like he kind of got, not, I don't see, yeah, the, he, he said, he referred to him getting bored, but that he was trying to learn how to like draw like a child again, or like make like work that's like, it's like pure and, and like instinctful, right? And I just want to give you mad props, dude, because you drawing with your left, you totally achieved that. Like, you know what I mean? Like. These works, they're not as polished as it would have been with your right, but that does not take away from the quality at all. You know, with, with your left hand, you were still able to, not still, but you were able to capture the nuances of these, of the subjects, you know, and of these, you know, I'm, I'm a baseball fan. I've been a Dodger fan since I was real young, you know what I mean? Like, probably the same as you, going to the stadium for over, like, three decades. Like, yep. you, like my, my parents, my grandparents, like, you know, Dodgers, man. Like, if you're from LA, like, the most likely the team is like, if for some reason you like the Angels, I don't know why, but like, <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So, I, these players are the players I've grown up on. And like, some of these players that you chose as your subjects, you know, are like, I, I have an emotional connection to them and the, what you're able to capture, you know, and, and with these, with these, with these portraits, man, it's, it's amazing. Like, I, uh, I just, I wish I could draw like this with my right hand and I'm right handed. So it's, it's amazing, you know. Um, I'm actually looking at Nomar's picture right now and I actually went to high school with his brother Michael. Me and Michael were actually friends so I actually got to meet Nomar a bunch of times and um, just like what you captured here, man, like it's it's amazing, dude. Like I, I love how you chose this photo too where he's doing his... Um, the batting gloves. Yeah, the batting gloves thing. His, yeah, his hey, you had to, man. Yeah, yeah that, that's amazing, dude. Like that, that even that 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 selection of that is just it's great, you know. And I, I just got to give you props, man. One hundred and nineteen pieces. Thank you. You know, yeah. there's there's people that get commissioned for shows at galleries that don't make pieces anywhere near this, you know, and with this much detail. So I just um, I wanted I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about this a little more, and I I just I feel 
really honored to be talking to you, man, because I, I feel like this work Thank is you. super important. I, I really hope that, you know, you do get an opportunity to maybe put this into a show because I feel like a lot of people, especially Dodger fans, would feel very lucky to be able to see these in person. I mean, I mean shoot, I kind of want, want to see these in person, man. Like, this is amazing. This one right here is like, I think this one's my favorite. Eddie Murray. Oh, yeah, the, with the double, with the helmet, with the hat. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that style, man. The 80s, man, they all had, like, the, the, yeah. the era of the Dodgers, they just had, um, they all kind of, not all of them, but, like, some of them had their own characteristics. Like, I remember Jose Offerman had the, uh, the, uh, the um, that thing covering his face. for He had, like, a special. Uh, yeah, that mask. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. He got hit in the face or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he had that mask that he would wear. That Mamba mask, that Kobe mask. Yes, exactly, exactly, man. And I remember him. The Rip being, Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I remember him like I remember like he was a shortstop and like that was so I played baseball and my, my favorite positions were second and short. I, I didn't play short too much. I mostly played second just because I felt like uh, shortstop was usually where the coach's son played <laughs> and my dad never coached. So uh, I was good enough to play second, but like I always love Jose Offerman. But yeah, man, this 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 amount of work to be done is just it's incredible, man. Like I just like I said, this is amazing. Um Oh, that's one of my favorite ones right there, the Ramon Martinez. Oh, right here, yeah, dude. And like, yeah. that's the thing too. Like, if you knew who Ramon Martinez was, there was a characteristic about him. You know what I mean? There was like a, there was an essence about him, and you first, you like captured that in this, um, in, in these pictures here. Uh, I think it's amazing. I also saw too that you actually were interviewed for KTL KTLA five. Um, oh yeah, that was well. That one was for uh, that one was for KCAL nine. KCAL, I'm sorry. Yes, KCAL nine. Yeah. Yeah, that was for KCAL. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they they reached out and you know said they wanted to talk, and you know I was like, yeah, of course, you know, any anyone that takes interest in what you're doing sure. and, and wants to learn about it, for me, it's it's exciting because it makes it, you know, it makes you feel like you're you're on the, you're, you know, you're onto something that you're doing, you're 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 going in the right direction. That what you're doing is, you know, isn't crazy or, or you know, um, you know. So that was that was kind of. That was exciting, and, and it, it was fun to do. And it was fun to see and get reactions and have, you know, fam hitting you up or talking to you and, you know, congratulating you. It makes you, it makes you more motivated, you know. Nice, man. Congratulations. Uh, the last thing I wanted to ask, um, just because, like I said, I, I want people, I want whoever's listening to this to be able to get enough insight and information or anything that's just inspiring, you know. For me, I've, you know, after leaving art school, um, you have been able to keep up the quality of your work. As someone who creates art myself and has, you know, created and creates and designs, even with design, you know, it's a muscle. And I, I feel like um, you have to keep doing it or you have to keep it up enough if you want to, like, hold that quality. What have been the saving graces for you, you know, to hold on to that because I know something that you learned 10 years ago doesn't necessarily mean you're going to remember that and keep that information. Right. How have you kept that fresh in your mind and what has helped you do that? And you know, what are, what are you doing to keep that going? Well, I mean, I think for me, the, the toughest part is just getting back into the rhythm and the feeling of drawing, like have that feel for it. But as far as like a lot of the technical things, those never go away. Like I, like as far as like learn, like thinking about color or contrast and composition and all that, those things never go away. You know, those are things that you were taught, you know, when you were in middle school art class kind of things, you know. And and as you go, the further the further you go into the, the education part, I guess. I mean, and it doesn't even mean if you go to an institution. If you, you know, if, if you're interested or you're, you're passionate about something, you're going to try to learn as much as you can for about it, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in school or not. Nice. I mean, school is school's good, and, and it's it's good to network and, and to meet people and have a community and, and everything is great. And you do learn a lot, and it, and it challenges yourself. But I mean, anyone that still is that passionate, like I said, is gonna find a way to learn things and watch videos. Now you can watch videos of anything. Yeah, you can learn how to build a house on YouTube. Yeah, so sure. I mean, you know, it's just a matter of of certain things that are going to stick, I think, technical. I mean, as far as the muscle memory, getting back into things that sometimes takes a little bit, you know, to get back into the feel for it, but it comes back right away almost. Like, it never goes away. 
you know, I, I'm drawing for me, it's something that I've been doing since I was a kid, since I was like five years old. Nice. Never stopped drawing, like just always was encouraged, so, you know, draw, 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 or, you know, always being told that, you know, in school that I should, you know, take art classes, like by counselors and stuff, so it was just something that I always did that I was good at, so I just kept doing it, and then I found out that, you know, maybe you can make a career out of it, um, you know, so I, I decided to pursue it 100%, and it was something that I felt was very, um, it was something very kind of, um, fun about it, you know, like just being able to make whatever you want with whatever materials you want um, and showing it to people and having people come see it and talk about it. And then there was also a idea of teaching it as well. You know, that's one of the reasons I went to grad school is because I wanted to teach. Um, teaching jobs have been hard to come by, um, but, you know, I still do what I can when I can as far as uh, making work. And some of it is commission work, um, you know, and even that is still, you know, it's clockwork as far as the technical, how you're going to approach things, how you're going to execute them. It's just having that hand, getting the hand back into it as far as with like drawing and painting, um, which is mostly what I am, a drawer painter. Um, I mean, I took all kinds of other classes and you no know, printmaking and ceramics and photography and everything, but I'm primarily primarily a, a drawer painter. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, just just doing it again, like keeping, like you said, it's a muscle, like just keep, like you have to exercise that muscle in order for it to stay, you know, healthy and, 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 and strong. Nice. Man. Yeah, and another, another um, project that you had, that you actually were able to collaborate on, not collaborate, but you created was for, um, was for Stussy. And if people aren't familiar, Stussy's the epitome of, not epitome, like the epitome of shoe wear. They're the legendary brand that has sustained time in regards to how they've influenced culture, clothing. I see a lot of people copying Stussy, so being able to work for a brand like that is like, it's a big, it's a big fucking deal, man. And like, I was really like, the piece that you did was amazing, man. That was, and I, I was going to ask, was that uh, airbrushed? Was it? Yeah, that was airbrushed. Yeah, I, and I had an airbrush. I had an airbrush really since I was in junior college, <laughs> since I was like nineteen, eighteen. Did so, you, you know, I had already done right? it. And I, what was that? Was that with your left hand or right hand? Nah, that, that was all right. Okay, <laughs> cool. I was, I was hey. like, I have to do. I'm done. Like I'm not. Yeah, for <laughs> for Stussy, I had to do all right handed. <laughs> it was amazing, but, and like like I said, like that's it's amazing that you're creating work that's you know connecting up with global brands. Um, these projects that you're doing with it. And I hate saying nine to five because I always feel like when people talk about nine to five, they, they say it like in a derogatory way. Having a nine to five, there's nothing, there's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like, that's Most, fucking awesome. all, all of my artist friends that I know, uh, they all have other jobs. Like, yeah, man. Even and if you, they, and even you if they teach, art. that's still a job. You yeah. know, even if you're teaching, that's still a job. Yeah, so but, I, I'd say about 90% of my friends that I know that are artists that some of that I went to school with and you know they all have other jobs it's you know especially in LA I, I feel everybody has more than one hustle you know yeah for sure um, you kind of have know, to you, it. you do this you do that you know hey people have student loans to pay you know <laughs> so you know people have to you know pay for their apartments for everything so for sure. I mean you need that steady yeah you know source of income regardless of, of what you do so everybody I feel Everybody that I know has more than one job, at least. Well, hey, man, like I said before, I commend you for doing both and inspiring people to know that they can, too, if they put in the time and effort. And just like you said, you know, stick with it. Uh, put in the time, man. Like, I, I know how much time you put in. People always talk about 10,000 hours. I know you put in more than 10,000 hours on two different art forms now that I've seen in regards to, like, your art and with your music. Um, the last thing, uh, and this will be the last thing, I promise, you know, if, there, if you have any, you know, what's your plans for the future? If you have any, any upcoming projects, what you're working on, uh, if you want to, um, we saw what your IG handle is, but if you have any other social platforms, any, um, you know, music social platforms you want to, like, connect people with, uh, like I said, he's an awesome DJ that curates amazing music. So if um, you want to touch a little bit on that at the end. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as, like, what I got going on, um, I'm currently going to finish some commission work that I've been 
that I kind of put off when I started the Dodger series. Okay. So I need to finish some commission work, um, and then I also have to. I I want to do a book of of that series. So I plan on publishing the book, and I also want to exhibit them. So I need to you know try to link up with a gallery, you know maybe write a proposal, um, and and try to do that, and try to I want to try to link those together. So when I have the show, I can have the book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I have you know that that I have to do. And, you know, I just want to keep making work as far as my own work. Um, you know, I know I can make the time. I already proved that to myself by doing the Dodgers. So there's no excuse. Um, and I was already making, a, a, working on stuff, trying to make stuff every day even before the Dodgers series. I did um, I did a pair of Huaraches out of cardboard. I don't know if you saw those. Oh, yeah, I did see that, man. That was... I, I yeah, have yeah. them right here, yeah. Um, so I, I did that. So I was already starting to make stuff. And, and again, like just with materials that are around me, like that's recycled materials. I was using cardboard that I just from slip sheets and pallets from work. So I was just bringing that home. And, and Here they are here. You know, oh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> that's incredible, man. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. So that's cardboard at the bottom. And then the top is like a cardboard paper, like the slip sheets from the pallets. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just, you know, just making the time. And I watched some videos on YouTube on on you know uh, these videos and interviews of of Huarache makers in Mexico and it was it was pretty interesting to see and just you could see exactly what they do there so that's pretty much what I, all I did how um, long did these take you to make man um those oh man i probably spent about 4 to 5 sessions on those wow uh, maybe between 3 and 4 hours each wow it looks like it this is that's attention to detail man that's insane yeah, and those are actually modeled after Air Max. So if you look at the front of the huarache, um, the part that goes on top of the foot, um, I that's like I took the the shape of an Air Max and just flipped it upside down. So uh, they're two di they're different. Like if you look at the right and the left, they're two different ones. Okay, yeah, this one's a little bit. Let's see. Okay, I see what you mean. Like that top one is like the. Yeah, there you can see it a little more. Yeah. yeah. So those are kind of like flip Air Maxes upside down, the two different ones. Like the classic one, and I think the other one was like the 95. Okay. That, like hexagon looking like Air Max. Yes, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know those really like popular ones that whenever they come out with the different With colors, the gradations, like yeah. the, the, they have the gradations, yeah. Yeah, my, I actually got my, my wife a pair of those, like some pink ones recently. They did like a pink, like metallic mm. one. Nice. On this, but so I know exactly what you're talking about. That's insane, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, I just want to just keep making work and try to just uh, put together a show. I haven't been in a, sh in a show in a while, um, but hopefully I can have that Dodger one and then have another solo show if I can. I have a lot of work um, just sitting that I haven't even shown. And, um, you know, I realized that going through my stuff, just how much, how many drawings, even before I did the Dodger series that I have, that I can probably put together uh, to have a show, and even some sculptures, like the huaraches, you know, um, and just, you know, do other things, uh, see what I can come up with. Nice. And then I, I have done more work for Stussy, so there is uh, some more of those come in, um, which is exciting as well, because for that, it's like you do the piece, and it's funny because the airbrush piece, like I was telling you, I had an airbrush since I was in, like, junior college, but I did about maybe... 10 to 15 different ones before I even finish that final one just to kind of get that, yeah, for sure. Know, get the feel back for it because I hadn't done it in so long, but I knew that I could do it um, just because I remember the techniques and what to do. Um, you so, know, I'm glad you said that too. Like, uh, I want people to, who are listening, I actually learned that from another artist friend of mine is that a lot of times the work that you see, the final product, there's like, 10 different versions, man. Like, you don't you don't ever see the back work that goes into it, you know, and, like, starting over. The homework. Yeah. yeah, man. Starting over and erasing. To me, starting over and erasing were probably, have probably been the, the best learning lessons for me because it's very liberating because you're not, you're not holding on to the project so much and, and you're giving, you're giving yourself freedom to, like, push yourself a little bit more. But, um, like, hearing that, you know, like, 15 different versions, you know, and, like, to create great work, you know, like, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to put in the work and the time. And um, I just, uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear that you're planning on putting a show together for this. 
I, I really feel like your work is super important as a, as a Latino, you know, like what you're representing and your existence and what you're creating is going to inspire, you know, Latinos that come after. And it's also, you know, like a fuck you to what, you know, people say about Latinos and I'm not, you know, on the other side. So like, I really appreciate that. You know what I mean? And like, I'm, I'm really happy to see you doing your thing, Eduardo. I'm really happy we were able to have this conversation. I can't wait to see you create more work. Um, I can't wait to hit you up for more theory like I do every once in a while. So thank you so much for um, for giving me that insight. I'm not telling everyone they should do that. Me and Eduardo, like, I put in time to create a rapport with him. So uh, <laughs> don't, don't hit him up randomly. But like I said, man, thank you so much for taking your time to do this. Um, I can't wait uh, to see that show to come to, uh, come together. And I really hope that, uh, you know, you do. I, I can't wait to get that book when you publish it because I'll be one of the first people, man. Still my uh, thank you for that thing, brother. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. It's It's been great. I mean, you know, I'm always on to talk about, you know, art and stuff. And I think it's important. I think it's important that people, you know, have others to kind of communicate with and, and talk about things because, you know, you learn from everyone that you talk to, I feel. For sure, you man. Know? I've talked to you. I've picked your brain about, like, graph, like the digital stuff, you know, because I don't, I don't know that game. Like, I, I'm... You know, I the most I've done is like pretty much hand drawn stuff and, and scanned it into Photoshop and you know I I've, I've learned a little bit and I'm try I tried teaching myself. I wanted to really invest in an iPad and stuff, but you know, same like anytime I've talked to you about that stuff and you're like giving me pointers and, and I think it's important and that's you know, that's the beauty about like linking with other artists and creatives is that you you know, you find things to that you have in common and, and kind of pick each other's brains and I think that's very, very important. And that's one of the things I do in about grad school and being in school. And that's why I wanted to teach, to be in that environment, you know, constantly. Um, you know, critiques are great, you know. Oh, you for know. sure. For sure. Some people, you know, some people can't take them, but, you know. I think you don't learn, I mean, and it, getting it, a feedback important. is probably one of the most valuable things because as you get, as you go on and, and move forward, you don't get you don't get it a lot, you know. Like, I don't mm -hmm. mean that some people work and they're like, "Oh man, this is awesome," and I'm like, "Cool, dude. I'm glad that you like it." But I wish you would tell me like what you don't like about it. You don't like about <laughs> it, or like, hey, yeah. you know, like I have um I have another artist friend of mine. He's a muralist. You might know him. His name's uh, 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 Sergio Ro uh, Roboletto, and he's done a um, lot of work in East LA. Um, a lot of stuff on First Street, and um, I'm sure I've seen his stuff. Oh yeah, I don't for think sure. I know uh, him, but I'm sure I've seen his stuff. Really? Cellas and uh, I mean, you, you, you've been a, you, you've been a cellas yeah. the last year. There's a yeah, I've DJ there a bunch of times. Yeah, dude, I, I think we've had conversations there. My bad. Yeah. Um, yep. But there's a there's a mural right across the street that um, it's a it's it's on that wall of that tacos place, and it's oh, like yeah. it's a it's a man and a woman. Like Sergio did that. He also did the one. I know, at, I know exactly what mural you're talking about. He did another one that's in front of Jim's, at uh, Jim's Burgers, which is down the street. It's um it's on a pool hall. He's doing yeah. a lot of pieces and uh. You know, a couple times, like, he's, he's messaged me when he's seen me trying new techniques. Because, like I said, with art, I'm still developing the theory side, like, all of those things. So, like, my style, I haven't dialed it in yet, So, but I'm still working on it. But whenever I, I, I am learning something new, like, Sergio sometimes will message me, you know, and be like, hey, man, try this. Or look at this person and look at this and look at that. And to me, that's, that's fucking gold, man. Like, you can't pay for that because, for the most part, people – they're just they're, they won't give you your honesty, you know. Like they're not gonna tell you like, hey man, I don't really dig this because the colors that you're using or the balance of like cold and warm, you know, it's just it it, it, it doesn't work. And like mm -hmm. you have the planes of color that you're using here, you it, it doesn't make sense. Like no one, you, people aren't gonna tell you that, you know. And when they do, you should really like in any aspect of your life, you should run with them, man. Because for the most part, if they're giving you constructive cr criticism. Like, they're telling you, like, hey, this is how it can be better. They want you to be better. Take yeah, they're te yeah, it's like they're telling you so, you know, so you kind of understand and, you know, from it. And, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's, some people take it as all they're hating on it or, or whatnot, but it's not even that. It's, it's, you know, it's just seeing maybe some things that that, that person didn't see. Like, that's how, like, me, I always embrace the critiques. Because that was, you know, that was 
a way for me to, it, it, would, it would humble you. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Yeah. Um, but it's also, you know, you, you see things that you, or they mention things or they tell you things that you didn't see yourself. Maybe you're blinded by one area of the yeah. piece or one thing of it. And it's just something that you don't even see. So critiques for me were always, always great. I mean, I always look forward to them. Um, yeah, like, even if they were good or bad, you still learn, you know. I, I remember, um, this is just another example, like, to tell people how, like, those kind of things help is that I've always enjoyed drawing portraits. I just like people, you know, like, very interesting to me. Like, and I would send pieces that I did that are super stylized, right, like, super stylized, and the style looks fucking cool, like, super clean vector lines, like, line work looks clean. And I sent it to, some, you know, I sent it to Sergio. I'm like, hey, man, what do you think? He goes, oh, dude, this looks awesome. Like, all of your work. I'm like, no, but. Where can I improve? And he's like, well, you really need to look at the anatomy of a face and how that works. He goes, your ears up here, the eye lines right here. He goes, the way that it's structured right now, the way you're looking, it should line up with your eye to the bottom of the nose. That's that's how it, you know, that's the anatomy for of the, a face. For the, for the most part, yeah. yeah. Sometimes people have bigger ears. Yeah, for exactly, you know, exactly, you know. exactly. But those yeah, are things that you got to pay attention to. Yeah, those are things definitely that if you're trying to do a portrait and – Depending on the style that you're doing it, I mean, and you want to make it look right, yeah. those are those are things that 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 are pointers for you to look at for sure. I mean, that's you know that's uh, you know anatomy, like live drawing stuff, like yeah, painting. Sure. That's the stuff that you learn. And yeah, did yeah. you have that book, really Anatomy for the Artist? What was that? Have you seen that book? Have you seen that book, Anatomy for the Artist? Yeah, it's I actually like have. Yeah. Big, you have that book? No, I don't have it, but I know I know exactly what book you're talking about. Get that book. That's a okay, great no. book. See, like, right there, dude, at the hookup right there, like, yeah. you get an insight on to, like, resources, you know, that you should get, like, I, uh... Um, it's worth investment. That's a great you know, book. You know, we should, uh, we should talk about this a little bit more after, but we should try to create some kind of, like, um, group of artists where we're, like, sending each other work and critiquing it. People that you can, like, you know, trust and stuff like that. I know those mm -hmm. relationships are kind of hard to build, but I think it'd be, it'd be worthy, man, just because I feel like, as Latino artists, we don't have a lot of that built-in you know, um, you know, that, uh, social circles that exist from like, you know, in other cultures where like their dad did it, their dad's an artist and their dad's friend owns a, what you call it. So you could just meet this person. I feel like mm -hmm. that could be really important, man. It, it, it could be really helpful, you know, as all of us are trying to move forward as artists and creatives. But, um, like I said, dude, uh, thank you so much again, Eduardo. I really appreciate it.